scorecard. And again, I'm taking internal audit as an example because you should know it pretty well. But a balanced scorecard categorizes key performance indicators into four generic perspectives. So th th this was given by you know, authors uh, Kaplan et al. and others. Um, these four perspectives are customers, processes, learning and growth, and financial. What the authors, Kaplan and others, wanted to get to was that we shouldn't, as an organization, only look at financial metrics. There's much more than that. They also say that the perspectives can be adapted to the organization or the function. So, I mean, internal auditors do have internal customers, so I'd, I'd say it's relevant, but maybe you're looking at another activity where, you know, instead of customers, you put, I, I don't know, um, you know, your, your operations that might be in processes, <laughs> you know, a, a different perspective, say your environmental concerns. Okay, your environmental concerns instead of customers, because that would be more important for you than many of uh, you know the, the other perspectives. So let's look at some examples here: financial, actual versus budgeted internal audit costs. Sure, customers could be the satisfaction uh, with the process and you know, more, more doubtfully, the outcomes of internal audits. So, you know, you can't always expect your so-called audit clients to be happy with the outcome, but they can at least be happy with kind of the, the process. One way of measuring this before giving the results <laughs> is um, to actually do a questionnaire to, um, you know, assess, you know, customer, internal audit customer satisfaction with the process. Cost savings, you know, the impact of recommendations are harder to measure, but potentially, if you can manage to measure them, then they can be a very good performance, um, you know, a key performance indicator. For processes, it could be the percentage of completed audits. So here, we're, we're directly looking at so the so-called you know, operations of a department, can be internal audit or can be something else. It could be the percentage of internal audits completed by a certain deadline, or the number of non-compliant statements, say from the standards, as evaluated, usually, I mean it can be an internal evaluation, but as evaluated often by a you know, external uh, quality assessment and improvement program um, evaluator. Learning and growth, you have the percentage of certified audit staff. You know, who has the CIA? Who has the CRMA? Who has the qualification in internal audit leadership? And, you know, training hours per internal auditor or, say, percentage of internal auditors, you know, meeting continuing professional educational uh, requirements. So I want you to look at this and say, this should be adapted to different organizations. This can be adapted, you know, I'm giving my examples for internal audit itself. You can change these perspectives, but it's very important to kind of still be aware of the different, you know, you know, d different perspectives that you can have for your department that you can adapt to your own little organization and that as an internal auditor, you could recommend to put in place.